So here I am in Revel, it's market day. I'm in the southwest of France. Kind of random, but decided to head down here, check out Saturday's markets, take in the uh, delights of a, a typical French market. So like, come join me. Well, thanks again for joining me. I'm Alex, and I'm also known as the Wandering Englishman. From the start, give this video a big thumbs up and also give it a subscribe if you're not already subscribed because there's lots more of this sort of content to come. I really hope you can join me. So I actually find myself in Revel because after leaving Cork Island, I flew into the uh, beautiful city of Carcassonne, which will be coming up soon. I decided I thought it'd be best to visit Carcassonne on a quieter day. Today is Saturday. Revel every Saturday has a Saturday market. I think I've been here once before, a long, long time ago, and I'm glad to come back, and I'm glad to come back with you guys. Obviously, the first time I came here, I didn't have a camel with me. This is one of the strange things about France. They um, open and sell knives everywhere. I remember as a kid, going on ski trips with my school, and we'd go to the French Alps, and we were fascinated by the fact that you could buy uh, butterfly knives, flick knives, push knives, you name it. Flick that around. What is that? It's dangerous anyway, you look at it, isn't it? I mean, it's got a sharp point, it's got a blade. That uh, is mental, it's... man. I ain't never seen any, anything like that. How would you carry that like that? Or... So, what if you use, let's say, in the kitchen? I think most of these knives are mainly for the kitchen and the table, so hopefully not beginning to use in a sort of bad way. But then we have. The escargot, which is obviously snails. Obviously, the French love their snails. Paella. Ravel is actually not that far from the um, Spanish border. You head about an hour and a half south. You get to the Pyrenees. Across the Pyrenees, you can either go into Andorra or um, cut through into Spain, and then you get to Catalan. Catalan country? Yeah. Hi. Bonjour. Amazing fruits. Over here we've got the poissons. Gonna go check it out. Fish. I had an, I had an amazing uh, fish dinner last night. So I arrived in France. I was treated to this sort of medley of seafood. A sort of a uh, light of this area. It was cassoulet of seafood. Wow. The one thing you, um, you can't take away from the French is their food. The French love their food. And if anything, possibly the best cuisine in the world. Uh, some might argue the Italian, some might argue it's Thai, Japanese, some Englishmen might even say the English. Uh, I personally think the French have the best food. They take their ingredients very seriously. And this is a poulet of Basque, so it's basically um, chicken cassoulet. I think that's the best way to describe it. You can obviously buy it. Here's the thing about the, the virus, now everything's behind the screen, so it makes seeing it a little bit diff more difficult. Fresh pasta. Fresh eggs. One euro fifty for a half a dozen. Reasonable price. Amazing pasta. Obviously, what you can't portray on camera is the smells. The smell of that rotisserie chicken is very, very good. Let's see what we got here. I noticed as I was in the car just driving past the sort of peripherals there were still people social distancing but when it comes to the actual market I think social distancing has really gone out the window as you can see there's a few people in masks but not everyone the masks are not compulsory here um, and also there's no need but look at this amazing amazing food this is uh, 
Nagle sausage. Basically pork sausage. This will last on, you could hang this up in your fridge, you can hang this up on your, well, basically by your cupboards, put it in your parlor. This, this will last a long time. Have it with a sandwich, have it on a piece of bread. Very nice. And then we got the um, amazing French bread. The French know how to cook bread amazingly well. Of course, this is what I used to obsess over when I was a kid. When I was a kid, I used to live for sweets. It was all my life revolved around. Obviously, I couldn't get access to them without regularly. Certainly not good for you, but when you're a kid, that's what you live for. <laughs> There's my mother. She's got a mask on for some reason. I'm actually here visiting my folks. First time, last time I saw them was in um, was at Christmas, so it's good to see them again. Some longest period of time ever, actually, some seven months later. Ah, merci, Monsieur. Oh. So fantastic new guy. Fantastic. Merci, Monsieur. Hmm. That was really, really good new guy. Obviously, you might want to buy some flowers. Reasonable prices, actually, for flowers. Six euros for a bouquet of flowers. Man has no excuse not to spoil some on there. So I think we've just done... I think we've just done 50% of the square, so I'll head it back on... Actually, really fair prices for uh, fruits. If you compare this to a lot of places in Europe, this is some fair prices. Not excessively priced, not, not priced. Borough Market in London, excessively priced, but here is good value. Apricots, peaches, grapes. What I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and see if I can get it here from top of that. Some amazing French pâtés though. The French do love their pâtés. And obviously when you think of France, certainly the stereotype is the garlic and the onions. You know, Colonel, it is quite pleasant to be a French onion seller. People smile at us. Mm. Especially that German officer over there. Right. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Amazing vegetables there. And you can see the old buildings. Ravel is obviously a medieval town. It's been around for a long time. There isn't much to really to report in terms of its history. One of the, uh, I think, the fourth French president came from Ravel. He uh, was a socialist. In the last election, they 65% of the population voted for Macron. Bit of uh, no social distancing there. I got nudged. Maybe it's because I mentioned the word Macron. Well, we're heading here. So Ravel, and it is pronounced Ravel as opposed to Revel, um, if it was the English without the accent it would be Revel, but as it's got the accent on the E, uh, it is Ravel. You know what, 
the, um, the amazing beams in this old building. I presume it's been around for a very long time. I'll have to look up in mine to see, to tell you the exact time this thing was built. I'm a big fan of goat's cheese. Mushrooms. Courgettes. Wow. Honey melons. Wow, proper honey. Some strawberries down there. Ravel was created as a bastide, and that's not to be confused with the term bastard, in 1342 by the King Philip de Voila. I think I'm saying that right, but I could be completely wrong on that one. I believe the size of these tomatoes, or tomatoes as the Americans would say, but seriously big tomatoes, the courgettes once again, amazingly big, juicy, ripe. Look at these. I mean, it's a real place to come if you really want fresh fruits and vegetables, fresh meat, fresh produce of any kind. This is a ripe population of 10,000, but I think on a Saturday that population probably doubles. I don't know, I could be wrong, but it feels like there's a lot of more people in this town than locals. And then what's this? Wow. Bonjour. So, um, sorry. Five liters of wine, 10 euros. Three liters, eight euros. It's, um, I'm sure it's very good. The locally produced rouge and rosé. It's, it's good. Yeah, it's good. Maybe I'll come back and get some later. We got a lot of wine stocks in the place I'm staying, so I don't know if I need any more. More pate. More pate again. Looks pretty good. Ah, so this region, I flew into Carcassonne. This region is famous for its cassoulet. Cassoulet comes from Toulouse, it comes from Castelnaudelet, and it comes from Carcassonne in a way. And this is, this is how you buy cassoulet. You buy it in a tin. Now this would feed a whole family, this stuff. This would be enough for one person, five euros to feed a person. This, this could, this would feed, I'd normally buy this sort of size. And what's in a cassoulet? You have French white beans, French sausages, and duck. However, you can get cassoulet of a medley of seafood, which is what I had last night. And you may get a cassoulet, some people are actually producing vegetarian cassoulet now, but it's pretty rare. If you say vegetarian in French uh, company, it's a rare commodity. Anyway, office of tourism. Check it out. One minute, 37 seconds later. Okay, so I've just been to the Office of Tourism. I noticed that people are upstairs in the, the top of the building. To go in, you've got to book a, an appointment to go to the top. My appointment's in 20 minutes. Maybe there's sort of social distancing on this as well. I'm not sure. So I'm going to come back in 15, 20 minutes to go to the top. But in the meantime, let's look at the rest of this market. Ravel used to be a Roman trade route via Toulousain, and its original name was actually La Bastide de Lavor. So I'm not sure how they went from that to Ravel. Honestly, if you haven't um, cooked cassoulet from a can before then you haven't lived but I must warn you the first time you do it you might be put off by it simple reason when, you, when it first comes out of the can it smells a little bit stenchy it almost looks like dog food but honestly when you you give it a time you give it attention you cook it in a proper cassoulet dish it, it, it's wonderful or it's magnifique as the French would say ah, the tart I 
obviously try to come to a market with a big bag. I've just bought myself a um, croissant jambon, so cheese and a ham croissant. You can also buy candles here, beeswax candles, very nice, cakes. No French, how am I saying this? <laughs> French market would be complete without French cheeses. And look, I just, I mean, the meat looks wonderful. <laughs> of course, if you want locally produced wine, right someplace. I didn't record it because it was just, I was with family. Last night I had a dozen French oysters. And these oysters are superb. This is your typical oysters. The French oysters, they've got a very juicy, juicy taste to them. They go very well with a bit of Tabasco and sort of uh, dressing. But amazing mussels, amazing oysters. Very good. And mussels. And mussels, wonderful. Hey. See, six, um, six oysters with five euros, six oysters and a glass of wine. Six euros. Not bad, you may as well go for the wine, I'd say. Almost everything in Ravel uh, circulates around this majestic, timbered, medieval market hall. As I stated earlier, this market hall dates back to the 14th century. And later in this video, I'm a, I will go up to the top of the bell tower, which used to be a watchtower in the past. Okay, sunglasses back on, I'm heading outside. It is an incredibly overcast day. There are some blue spots in the sky. Despite that, it's still very bright on the eyes. Haven't finished this side of the market, so I'm just gonna check, check it out. What is noticeable about this time and the last time I was here, the market now has uh, no live produce. There used to be live chickens and sometimes live pigs and this would be on sale, but I think possibly to do with the COVID, they're no longer selling that in this market. Obviously this smell from rotisserie chicken and another one, but it does smell amazing. We've got the nuts here, more French cheeses. People queuing. It's making me hungry. I'm hoping after I go to the top of this, because that's exactly where I'm going to head. Top there, get a good view, get a good perspective on the city that I can get some decent food afterwards. The problem is, like all markets, you've got to come in the morning. From about lunchtime onwards, things start to unwind, things close up, so make sure you get here at around about 9.30, I'd suggest. Too early, everything will feel a bit sparse, but 9.30, you start getting peak. Right now it's 11, you can see it's very busy. Well, it's 11.40, I think. Oh. Quarter to I stand corrected. So you can even try the peaches just to make sure they're good. What I'm going to do is we did this is where we started. We began the market here. We did a pretty, pretty much a loop all the way around. So I appreciate the fact you just joined me. There. I'm going to eat my croissant, get a little bit of energy, then I'm going to climb the stairs to go there to give you guys a good view. I'm just going to take in this last bit and we're going to cut to being up there in a moment. Oh, 
Wow. More French sausages. Amazing. Want to see if, you, if you're not a vegetarian, you honestly have to try the um, crack sausage. It's very good. The mega sausages here in this street, very good. And this is where I began. I began filming from the patisserie. So we've just done the whole loop. Now I'm going to eat. A little longer than a few minutes later. Oh, so the chain, uh, oh, I don't remember the name, uh, really nice wood, uh, oak. Oak, oh, okay, yeah. decent oak. Yeah, yeah. And I heard that, oh, there's the bell for the, um, for the midday, 12 o'clock. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear that this is, uh, this is from here, this is from yeah, Rebel. Yeah, yeah. Is it nice? Uh, well, if you like mint, yeah. <laughs> but if you don't, not so good. Uh, right, yeah, <laughs> that's it. Is it popular? Uh, Do people drink it here? Or? Yeah, really, yeah, really, really. Uh, it um, it uh, was uh, uh, elaborated in uh, 1898. Okay. Uh, with this uh, bottle shape uh, because of the long term, in fact. Mm -hmm. And so it's the basis of uh, the basics of uh, marketing, in fact. The Jet Brothers uh, decorated this, uh, this alcohol. Uh, with seven different kinds of uh, mines. Right. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was really successful and it still is. Uh, but uh, at the end of the, uh, the 80s, uh, it was, uh, it was uh, bought by uh, Bacardi. Ah, okay. So mm -hmm. now, now it's part of the big conglomerate. So mm -hmm. it, it's not made in Rebel anymore. It's not. No, it's, no. But it's still, it's still made, yes? You can still buy it. Yeah, yeah. It's still buy, but not in Rebel. Okay. Unfortunately. You still have uh, the, the cinema and the, the cultural center here in Rebel. This is the old distillery okay. of, uh, of Jet. And uh, yes, this is unfortunately all we still have uh, from Jet. Industry. Uh, in Industry is gone. Yeah. That's what I said. Yeah, we've got, uh, and this is the this is this is the center of Ravel. Yeah, this is the old center of Ravel, La Bastide. And this one of the particularities of the Bastide is that it is built uh, around a um, commercial place. In fact, right. Here. Uh, this is where you've got the market. Uh, and uh, co in comparison to other cities that are built around uh, a church or something like this, here you can see the church that has been built. Uh, Shopping is more important. Ten years later. <laughs> We don't care about religion, it's just in order to, uh, to get some business. It's, it's definitely amazing. And what, what's the reasoning behind these cir circles? Is that the, the original city and this is just what's been added on? or is it? Yeah, in fact, you, here there, was, there were some fortress fortifications okay. uh, that have uh, been built in uh, 1355. So there was a wall there? Was that, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, all that, uh, that is around was recently built. Yeah. Oh wow, you see, you see the, uh, the old wall. Yeah. It's amazing. Amazing. It's amazing. Here you've got the phenomenon Bastille, just in the south uh, west of France. Uh, so, what do you mean, the phenomenon of Bastille? What is that? Uh, because uh, the Bastille started uh, to be created in the uh, 12th century, 1222, yeah. uh, in Cours sur Ciel, just in town, about right here. Uh -huh. uh, and the last one was the Bastille d'Anjou, just okay. here. Yeah, about here, in uh, 1351. Wow. And this one uh, is from uh, 1342. Good stuff. And uh, you don't have others in France. Just, just really a few in Normandy. Yeah. So really, really a few more. Okay. Almost all of them are in South West of France. Wow, okay. Just so I get this clear, the, um, the prison cells the prison cells were down there and, the, yeah. and then they Alors here this is where, this where the apartment of uh, the, the, the police jailers jail. uh, and uh, it was so rebuilt in uh, 1834 uh -huh. uh, because all was uh, putrefacted, uh, was uh, in bad shape. So but you kind of kept the original look because yeah, it used to look like this ago, and it's sort of, yeah. This, one is, uh, this, is, this is new since 1834. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. But still, we, we cannot be too, too many on the... No, no, <laughs> it's... You gotta, otherwise, it could look from well. This is, uh, yeah, this is, this is still old by a lot of country standards. There's countries that didn't exist before this was built. <laughs> 
the first floor where, where we have the office, yeah. it was the administrative uh, center for the consuls, the governors of the city. The first then uh, 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 stepway yeah. uh, was the jail, where the jail. Then we had the apartment of the, of the jailers. And here it was in fact the watchtower in order to uh, be sure not to be attacked because it was... Uh, you can see people coming across the hills, which is, uh, I yeah. guess, is this the Black Mountains over here? Uh, sorry? The Black, the Black Mountains? Yeah. yeah, this is the Black Mountains. That's, That's impressive. That's beautiful. So this was built... This, this was, this, not, this structure here was yep. built before the church. Yep, wow. eight years before the church. And I presume some of these buildings appeared probably before the church, if it was a square. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was, but this, this was the first thing that was built here. Yeah. The, the tower and the, the place where we've got the market. All the, this construction here, these houses, yep. were built in uh, 1342, yeah. Wow. Really. Was it, and would, was there a um, was there a lord or was there a uh, was there a, was there a peripheral uh, who was in charge? Uh, it was it were some kind of governors, six governors that yeah. uh, were called consuls. Uh, it's um, almost the same kind of organization than in Toulouse with the capitals. Yeah. Uh, so six people were uh, elected each year yeah. in order to, to govern the city. Um, so the kingdom of France was, um, how to say, uh, the, the city of Revel was independent in uh, regarding, in compar oh, sorry, it was independent uh, from the French kingdom. However, uh, they had some uh, taxes to, to pay to, uh, to the, uh, the French king Same, at yeah. the time, Philippe VI de Valois. I see, I see. Okay, that's fantastic. So as we see, so you've got the Black Mountains over here. Amazing view, actually. So he, he stated that this used to be a watchtower. Um, the prisoner, sheriff, or the people that used to keep the prisoners would live in the apartment below this. And on the first floor, which is the one above the ground floor, they would keep up to about seven or eight prisoners. Now, generally, it would be probably people involved in bar brawls or, you know, petty thieving. Nothing too serious, because if it was serious, then they would probably take them elsewhere. But you can, you can imagine this square is seeing some action at some stage. But it's truly phenomenal. And I'm going to be heading to this church, because it's clearly a beautiful church. But I, like I say, this is, this is a town that has, only has 10,000 people, but obviously comes to life when it's market day. And as you can see, wonderful view. Gives you a bit more perspective on the surrounding area and also the weather. They only allowed limited people up here, that's why I had to book. So I had to wait about 20 minutes. So I managed to go get something to eat. We've got croissant all over me. What a wonderful view. And look at these. I mean, the Americas weren't even discovered by when this was built. So it gives you some perspective. And the southwest of France is still very, very French. You'll notice it's not, you know, it, it feels French. Um, whereas if you, if you hit Paris these days, you'll be lucky to hear a French voice sometimes in some parts of Paris. A little bit of politics there, but you know, you can't get away from it. Oh wow. So it actually, it helps me out. So the Pyrenees are that way. You had a hundred kilometers. You should take about an hour and a half in the car to get there. Um, Castle Nordre, which is where Castle is from, 16 kilometers that way. Um, I came through Castle Nordre to get here. Um, you've got wind turbines over here. I appreciate with this camera, you probably can't see them, but the wind turbines litter the landscape. And I, I, I don't mean that. They don't litter the landscape there. In my opinion, I think they're, they're quite mesmerizing, quite beautiful. A lot of people dislike them, but the French get a lot of, a lot of their electricity from French windmills. There's a lot of canals in this area as well. Let's try. I can't go up any further, but the, he told me there was three bells at the top of the tower. 
And you head this way, you head towards the Canal de Midi. And you head towards, what else is down here? Yeah, so the Mediterranean is that way. 100 kilometers to the Mediterranean. 100 kilometers to the Pyrenees. It really isn't a widely visited area of France. In this peak July, which is where we are right now. Today is the, um, the 11th of July. Give you some perspective on when this was filmed. Normally, we didn't have a COVID-19 crisis. This is peak summer, July and August. And most people that come visit France would head towards the south of France. This area is generally avoided, but it, it, is a, it is an area that one really can appreciate. There's castles dotted all over the landscape. There's chateaus dotted all over the landscape. There's little towns, medieval towns, just like this. Some towns more impressive than others, but honestly, not to be, uh, not to be underestimated, this part of France. Um, and it really has a sort of a culture of itself, and it does, unlike some parts of France, I should say, feel very, very French. And what a beautiful day it's turned out to be. Look, blue skies now, the, the gray skies are leaving us, so they're heading towards the Black Mountains. I think I'm gonna head down, try and find folks who I basically haven't seen in seven months, and I think we're gonna head towards the church together. Or maybe we, I might even get lucky and have a bit of lunch, I'm not sure. But what a wonderful little town. So this church was um, basically constructed about 10, 20 years after the original market. So back in the 14th century, I think obviously my father muttered to me that uh, the market must have been making money. So they thought, well, actually, let's build this impressive church. Amazing echo. I'm the only, pretty much the, the only person in here apart from my father who's hovering at the back. And. Uh, I mean, it doesn't have the sort of the decor of a, a Catholic church, and yet this is a Catholic church. Normally Catholic churches are very golden, but uh, still very beautiful. And the echo. Amazing, eh? Pretty, pretty nice. And that's pretty much it. That's Ravel. So thanks for joining me on this journey. I, um, I'll see you in the next video.